Hey guys, welcome back to the North American Guitar. I'm Lindsay and today I'm excited to launch a new series for us. We're gonna call this one Behind the Songs. And I'm here today with our first guest, the wonderful Nashville-based guitarist, dobro player and fiddler, Mr. Jimmy Stewart. Jimmy has played with a lot of legendary folks like Dolly Parton and Reba McIntyre, as well as Brooks and Dunn, but you're also a fantastic songwriter in your own right, and you've collaborated with some awesome folks like Guy Clark and Chris <coughs> Stapleton. So with all of that said, uh, do you want to tell us a couple things about the songs you're going to play for us today? When I was about 13, my dad and I were moving around all over the state of Louisiana, and we wanted a travel trailer, a motorhome or something, but we really couldn't afford that. And he had the bright idea to buy the school bus and fix it up, and we just didn't fix it up. <laughs> we just bought it and lived in it, an empty shell. And uh, so, so people always seemed like they thought that was really interesting. I was trying to think of a song to write something about with Guy, and I thought of this. <laughs> anyway. Nice, so, that's very hip. I feel like I, I have friends who've done that same thing, but like, you know, probably yeah, it's much later. It's happening a lot these days, you know, they've got the whole hashtag van life yeah. famous thing going. <laughs> You're but ahead anyway, of the game. Yeah, we were, it was, this was about 1983, and uh, I'd gone over to Guy's house several times and tried to write with him, and just felt so stupid trying to think of something, like come up with your typical ideas, you know, and, and uh, it was very intimidating to, to try <laughs> to present him with an idea. So he, he told my publisher, the guy that made me the appointment, he said, you know, I really like him, he's good, come over, we have a good time, but I can't really get him to settle down and stop talking and come up with something to write about. My publisher said, try just, don't go back over there again until you can think of something. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I waited several months and then I showed up one day and the first thing I said, I think I know what I want to write a song about today. And he said, uh, okay, what's that? And I said, I think about, I want to write about when I lived in a school bus when I was a kid. And he put some paper down and said, all right, let's get started. So that was the first thing he ever agreed to, you know, so we went with it. Yeah, I think the main thing about this song to me was I thought it was funny that I had to stand out in front of the bus and catch the school bus. And to me, that was the whole idea of the oh, song, yeah. you know? <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, it turned out having like, I think some people get set, feel bad at some points, you know, or it's, uh, but in my mind, it was, it was comedy and it mm -hmm. was kind of fun when it was happening. So anyway, we bought this school bus when I was in the seventh grade. Wasn't too bad that summer, we parked it in the shade. We had an extension cord from the house next door, a window fan and a mattress on the floor. We weren't exactly homeless anymore. We painted the whole thing red. Get up out of bed, son, the sun is shining bright Wake up and get some rest It was hot as hell last night And get your clothes and shoes on I know how bad you feel But you gotta go to school And this old bus ain't got no So anyways, you can see where I'm coming from. Wasn't too much fun living in a school bus and trying to go to school. Standing out by the road was embarrassing as hell. And I'd stand out there hoping nobody could tell if we were living in the school bus or staying in the house next door. You know how 13 year old can be. Get up out of bed, son, the sun is shining bright Wake up and get some rest It was hot as hell last night And get your clothes and shoes on I know how bad you feel But you gotta go to school And this old bus ain't got no 
He'd say, son, they're gonna throw my ass in jail if you don't start going to school. And get your clothes and shoes on. I know how bad you feel. So anyway, some people hear my story and say that music saved my life. I didn't get much of an education, so I guess they're probably right. We trade the shotgun for a dobro and built a fiddle. Learned to play the guitar and sing a little. Made up my mind to be a picker for a living, and here I am today. With air conditioning and everything. Get up out of bed, son, son. Shining bright Wake up and get some rest It was hard as hell last night And get your clothes and shoes on I know how bad you feel But you gotta go to school And this old bus ain't got no So that song, along with the one that you'll perform next, those are both from your album, Poor Rambler, but uh, School Bus is also featured on a project, a, a whole Guy Clark festival project, right? Right, and, and that was uh, a friend of his named Steve Russell that's a painter that lives in Rockport. There are, I think, 16 paintings based on 16 Guy Clark songs, and there's a painting of a school bus. It's not the school bus, but it's just his, his uh, vision for a painting after hearing the songs, you know, the songs, so, and it kind of looks a little bit like the bus we ran, yeah. Oh, That's nice. the rounded <laughs> corners and all that. If folks want to learn more about that, it's at GuyClarkFestival.com. And so, <laughs> <laughs> so this next song is called Naked. Yes. Please tell us all about it. Well, I was uh, sleepwalking and I hadn't been on the road in a while and I got up to go to the bathroom and this happened. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I had told the story to everyone because I was mortified, you know, I mean, I was, I was in the hallway just like covering myself and you know, trying the doorknob and turn around, look both ways, try the doorknob again and it wasn't gonna work. I wasn't getting back in and so uh, after I got back in my room, I just started telling everybody, you'll never believe what just happened to me. I just walked out of my room completely naked. And uh, like I said, I grew up as a kid. I didn't know the difference. I didn't know that the word was actually naked and not naked. We just said it that way. <laughs> so uh, the two co-writers on this song are Sean Camp and Chris Stapleton. And both of them had heard the story multiple times. One night, actually, School Bus led to me writing naked even though they have nothing to do with each other one night I, per I performed school bus it being a story song someone walked up to me right after i sang school bus at this private party and, and it went over real well and, and then this guy walks up and says hey uh so and so told me to get you to tell me about the time you locked yourself out of your hotel room naked so a light went off and I got up the next morning and thought, okay, I need to write a song about that. I wrote the first verse and got all the way up to the first line of the chorus and I kind of just stalled and couldn't think of anything else. I walked out my back door, Chris Stapleton and Sean Camp both showed up at the same time outside and I said, hey, y'all listen to this. And we walked in and got it written in 10 or 15 minutes because they had both already heard the story so many times. <laughs> they just spit out the next couple verses and. I'm happy to have that one. Nice. <laughs> as silly as it is. <laughs> and here's Jimmy performing Naked. Well, I was walking through the dark, heading for a door. I wasn't quite sure where I was, but it seemed like I'd been there before. So I went ahead and turned the handle and then I walked on through That door slammed shut behind me I woke up, I came to And I was naked 
Oh, I was naked as hell on the 32nd floor of the Taj Mahal Hotel. Yeah, I was naked, living a bad dream in a desperate situation, hoping I would not be seen. Cause I was naked. Well, at first I tried to hide it, but I couldn't hide it all. So I laid down on my back behind a table by the wall. I guess I should not have been drinking and carrying on till two or three. But how'd I wind up in that hallway when all I had to do was pee? And I was naked. Oh, I was naked as hell on the 32nd floor of the Taj Mahal Hotel. Yeah, I was naked, living a bad dream in a desperate situation, hoping I would not be seen, cause I was naked. Well, I heard commotion in the hallway as the camera stared me down. Then hotel security came, and I knew that I'd been found. He said, son, what are you doing? Don't you know this ain't allowed? And I said, I know it's not, you dumbass. Won't you go get me a towel? Cause I'm naked. Oh, I'm naked as hell on the 32nd floor of the Taj Mahal Hotel. Yeah, I was naked, sleepwalking like a fool. But now that it's all over, ain't the story kind of cool? Cause I was naked, I didn't have a stitch of clothes. I was naked as a jaybird from my head down to my toes. Yeah, I was naked, a full grown naked man. But at least I'd finally lost some weight. Got myself a tan, but I was naked. Never ended like that. But oh. <laughs>